questions? Yes? Oh, John? Um, you know, I think he's just really imagining kind of small little families, I think, right? Where they're just brothers and sisters. Again, he doesn't give us much evidence for this. <laughs> from, an, from an evolutionary and genetic standpoint, this is a big stretch to talk about from the beginning, I think. Yes, but it's any, any discussion of the origin of language is going to be a stretch, right? <laughs> this is a big stretch. Um, but um, what I think is useful here is an imagination of how the origin of language must have coincided with the origin of humanity and really maybe an origin of, of a transition from kind of instinctual, uh, an instinctual basis for relationships to a, yeah, for, for Rousseau, a kind of love basis of relationships. What's the difference between love and instinct? I mean, he doesn't really talk it through, but if we, if we think about it, he's saying that love depends upon feelings that are detached from instincts. And so we have to imagine, well, how do those feelings develop? And what do they mean beyond instinct? that would have to do with language. Because I think, obviously, you know, the feelings that we have for one another are not, are not based upon just instinct. They're based on kind of getting to know each other, you know, in, I guess, in a linguistic context that involves really the construction of meaning, I suppose. And that's, that construction of meaning is what's at stake in language as well. So, you know, even though we can't totally take his story literally and seriously, it does indicate to us a place to be looking, right? In that this transition from instinct to feeling seems maybe to be related, or could be related, to the transition from pre-language to language. And, and one of the indications of this is also the way in which we have to think of language as something that must have been a transposition. You so recall one of the key arguments that Rousseau made before was that this first language had to be figurative. It had to be f based on figures of speech, like metaphors. And one of the characteristics of metaphors, as he says, is, well, it could be you're, you're, you're taking one word and linking it to a different word. Right, one figure to another figure. Remember, so with Warburton, it was a good example of the proverb referring to the apologue. But Rousseau said, well, that, that's not the only way that figures can work. It can, it can also work as a linking of a word to an idea. So that you're transposing an idea into a word. And so if we think of this other move that he's imagining of moving from a situation of instinct to a situation of love, that's also a transposition, which is to say you've got a functioning, so he's imagining a functioning system of incest and isolated families. It all works and makes sense. And then he says, but we can transpose that functioning system into a different functioning system that includes this interaction between families. So you're transposing this instinctual basis of reproduction to this linguistic slash romantic understanding of relationship. And, and you have to figure out how you move from one to the, to the next. How do, you, how do you transpose one into the other? And so, you know, this would, I, I think eventually, and this would, I'm going to get to this at the, at toward, toward the end of the quarter, we have to really kind of imagine this primitive state in which you've got a, you know, you must have had a, a well-functioning, say, primate community that had their system of doing things, why would they switch? And you'd have to imagine a kind of transposition, a translation of everything that's going on at that point, and then you've got to transpose it into a different kind of system of doing the same thing. And you'd have to figure out, well, just what would lead to that kind of transposition, right? What would lead to that shift from a system that functions without any kind of human language to a different system that, that, that depends upon human language for it to function? Right? And so he's trying to imagine that 
that original transposition. That's the original figure that creates speech. All right, so I think that's I think what we want to hold on to, and and, and even you know I mean, even the, the the discussion of incest. Well, we'll get to this later because I, I want to finish this lecture. But the discussion of is in, of incest is it's a discussion of kinship as well, right? It's it's a it's a discussion of how um, animals function without a kinship system. You know, one of the you know one of the anthropological debates that's gone on for like a century is what is kinship and how is it particular to humans? And then that's linked to the incest prohibition as well. I mean, obviously, the one thing that anthropologists sort of focus on as the sort of universal human trait is the incest prohibition and how it's linked um, to, to kinship system. But we're going to get to this later.